have and that's one maybe final the biggest question. statement in terms of business. That's the biggest statement. Okay. Because we have basically one what final he's question. saying is he is Mr. going President. to destroy the oil industry. Okay. Will you remember that, Texas? Will you okay. remember that, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma? Vice President Biden, let me give you 10 seconds to respond, Ohio. and then I have to get to the final question. Vice President Biden. It takes everything out of context, but the point is, look, we have to move toward a net zero emissions. The first place to do that by the year 2035 is in energy okay. production, by 2050, totally. All right. One is he going to get China to do it? No, we're finished with is this. Is he we going to, to get China to do it? We have to move on to our final question. We have to move on to our final question. I'm going to rejoin Paris Accord and make oh. China abide by what they agreed to. I want to rejoin the Paris Accord. I'm not 100% sure why Trump thinks it's so fair on for our businesses um, up front more than other countries. I'd like to know. I understand one thing though, China's emissions are our emissions because our stuff, it comes from Chinese factories a lot of the time and the world stuff comes from Chinese factories and we need to recognize that. And so we, can, we need to stop blaming China for problems that we cause for them, but they cause them for themselves. But all I'm saying is, it's a group effort, and we need to recognize that dealing with the climate and dealing with the energy crisis is a group effort, and uh, we need to deal with it as a group. All right, this is about leadership, dollars. gentlemen. And this first question does go to you, President Trump. Imagine this is your inauguration day. What will you say in your address to, America, to Americans who did not vote for you? You'll each have one minute, starting with you, Mr. We President. have to make a country totally successful as it was prior to the plague coming in from China. Now we're rebuilding it and we're doing record. How do you define success? I'm sorry that I cut him off. Actually, I'm not. Um, this guy, his definition of success is overconsumption. It's destroying the planet. My definition of success is living like Americans in a sustainable world. Because let's face it, a lot of the world lives more sustainably than us. And it's going to be pretty tough to cut our emissions that much. Um, like I'm talking about to the levels of countries like India per capita, that's, that's like impossible. There are just so many people there. We don't live like that, um, but we can try. And so what I would say to all Americans is, I need your help and you have to stop getting over labels. You have to stop thinking of things in religious terms. You have to stop thinking of things in terms of God help me. And you have to start thinking of things in terms of how can I help and I need your help. I need you to care about the planet. I need you to care about your neighbors. I need to love I need you to love your neighbors as yourself. And what does that mean? If you love your neighbors as yourself, that means you're obsessed with your neighbors. And if you're obsessed with your neighbors, that means you really, really care about them and you want what's best for them. And if you want what's best for them, then you want them to have a future that's sustainable. And all I'm saying is a lot of you guys are acting like your neighbor's children don't exist. A lot of these old people don't think about how we're on a ticking, we're on, we're on a clock here. We're running out of time to save the planet. We don't have much time left. And if we don't all get on board for making sure that my children have a future, then my children aren't going to have a future because my children don't exist yet unless they do because I'm a clone, which if, if they do exist, then it's because I'm a psychological warfare weapon. And that's why I'm just, I'm really trying to figure out like how in the world I don't have a gun in the United States of America, how a spy that pissed off top people in the government can be, have his gun taken away when he has more danger in his life than any spy in the entire freaking country. Maybe the Department of Defense head has more danger, but all I'm saying is I'm pretty freaking close. So how in the world are we not thinking about national security issues and we're thinking about local government officials who messed up? They messed up. They knew they were lying. And you guys are going, well, yeah, he knew he was lying, but we can't let him go to jail because he has a college degree. Well, what about me? I have a college degree. No one cares. All I'm saying is at some point, we need to figure out if spies get to have the Constitution apply to them because that's why spies do what they do. That's why we sacrifice our, our lives. That's why we go and get poisoned. That's why we put our lives in danger. That's why we go hang out with terrorists. That's why we, we know where we're going. We go there anyways. You know why? Because of the Constitution. So when our constitutional rights get taken away, it really pisses off spies. And that's why I'm saying, yeah, Donald Trump doesn't get certain intel. He's never going to get certain intel. We don't trust him. 
So yeah, so his people that he appoints can crush you then. They can break the constitution with you. That's not how it works. Everyone gets the constitution. Now we're rebuilding it and we're doing record numbers, 11.4 million jobs in a short period of time, etc. But I will tell you, go back. Before the plague came in, just before, I was getting calls from people that were not normally people that would call me. They wanted to get together. We had the best black unemployment numbers in the history of our country. Hispanic, women, Asian, people with diplomas, with no diplomas, MIT graduates, number one in the class. Everybody had the best numbers. And you know what? The other side wanted to get together. They wanted to unify. Success is going to bring us together. We are on the road to success, but I'm cutting taxes, and he wants to raise everybody's taxes, and he wants to put new regulations on everything. He will kill it. If he gets in, you will have a depression, the likes of which you've never seen. Your 401ks will go to hell, and it'll be a very, very sad day for this country. All right. Vice President Biden, same question to you. You guys all know the economy's been taking a pretty big hit lately. Why did that happen? Um, my theory is that a lot of people got afraid of their shorts and they had been shorting consistently because they're hoping that things hit really big one of these days and they decided to sell. And um, I think sometimes I see the things that happen in the economy that are related to me and it's pretty shocking because I have no followers. I have no views. This view will, video will get four views. So it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter what I say. Every everything I do, it, it, it's like it has no uh, implications to the international um, arena. But somehow, um, I have crushed Bitcoin like by what thirty three percent once by attacking cryptocurrency. Yeah, that actually happened like right when I attacked them. And so um, what I'm saying is that what I do has an impact on the world. And I don't think some people understand that when they think that they're doing things in secret, they think they're doing legal things in secret, they're not doing them in secret. There are people that are watching you and they're seeing what's happening and they're going, wow, this is really unconstitutional. You were planning on rigging this guy's court situation so much and now you have to really, really deal with it. You have to deal with the problem of violating federal election law and you probably need to start talking about who told you it was okay because that's the best way to get off. Because at some point, um, is it you or is it your boss? But I'm afraid to say that because I'm afraid to defend myself in court, which means I'm afraid to use my First Amendment rights because I'm afraid I'm not even gonna get a jury trial because I'm afraid I'm gonna get declared incompetent because it seems like everyone's pushing for me to be declared, be declared mentally insane even though I can prove who I am, which I'm a very serious person. I travel the world. I meet a lot of people. I know a lot of people. You think that a spy is someone that steals stuff. A spy that's an American is someone that meets people and has relationships with people and someone that knows people and someone that builds confidence. It's not someone that pisses everyone off because we don't want our spies to be hated. And a lot of these countries have sent out spies to do th things like my work computer when I, I shared an office with a guy who wrote the President's Daily Briefing and he was a very serious mathematician. He was a very serious computer scientist. He was a military guy. And when I was sharing an office with him, someone launched a cyber attack on my computer. And I shared an office with a, a postdoc P Chinese student. I don't know if he was, which, if you're a postdoc Chinese student, that means you're like, after you have a doctoral degree, you're not a student anymore, you're beyond a professor. But what I'm trying to say is, I thought it was him because I, I automatically want to blame the Chinese. But it's also because I have a complicated relationship with the Chinese because I do live in a world where we they, they do cyber attacks against me because they can and I say things against them because I can and um, all I'm saying, I, I live in a complicated world. And so, but more than anything, my, my, my life is about my relationships. Like I have a relationship with a Chinese girl who is a very, very, very smart, beautiful, wonderful woman that if I wasn't in the situation I was in, I'd marry that girl. And so, all I'm saying is um, I have a lot of relationships with people and um, that's the thing. Like, I don't think that Donald Trump understands like, oh, I got very friendly with them. I spent three hours like telling them how wonderful they are. That's my relation. I don't think he understands that um, me, I go and live in other countries. I build relationships in ways that like, hopefully you've built relationships like that, but probably your relationship is more like strip club relationships. And my relationship is, um, 
facing the world in a very brave way at a young age, um, in a way that most people are too afraid to do. And that's why uh, when you say that I don't matter, that I, I, I was irrelevant, the head spy to Israel only knew one student who went overseas the year, I, the, the semester I went, and it was me. So uh, maybe he's retired. Maybe someone told me to go. And so I, I, I think you need to understand that um, you're not going to be able to lie your way out of this. Like you guys are actually in violation of federal election laws. What will you say during your inaugural address to Americans who did not vote for you? I will say I'm an American president. I represent all of you, whether you voted for me or against me. And I'm going to make sure that you're represented. I'm going to give you hope. We're going to move. We're going to choose science over fiction. We're going to choose hope over fear. We're going to choose to move forward because we have enormous opportunities, enormous opportunities to make things better. We can grow this economy. We can deal with the systemic racism. And at the same time, we can make sure that our economy is being run and moved and motivated by clean energy, creating millions of new jobs. And that's the fact. That's what we're going to do. And I'm going to say, as I said at the beginning, what is on the ballot here is the character of this country. Decency, honor, respect, treating people with dignity, making sure that everyone has an even chance. And I'm going to make sure you get that. You haven't been getting it the last four years. Who am I? I'm someone that is passionately interested in monks. I'm interested in people that reject the pleasures of the flesh and all this stuff that everyone cares about. And they try to find happiness outside of stuff. Who am I? I'm someone that's not afraid to go be homeless um, when I could go get a job I hate and sacrifice my morals and sell an item that I know that there's a competitor that has a less expensive item and it's higher quality, but I can still sell this item. I could do that. No, I couldn't. It's not in my soul. I'd rather be homeless. And who am I? I am someone that's chosen. I'm someone that would have no problem hanging out with hippies on a sustainable farm and having dogs and having babies and playing acoustic guitar music around a campfire and loving my friends and eating local food and having a relationship with my local community and not having to deal with the entire world. That's who I am. But I also feel like I'm something bigger because I've always had a life that's for something bigger because I can't help it. I care about something bigger. I'm obsessed with the entire world. I'm obsessed with foreign policy. I there's a reason that when I'm running for president, everyone keeps going, wow, he sure is good at running for president. I know what you do when you're the president. I know what happens in the intelligence world. I'm a part of the intelligence world. Like I am trained to be part of the intelligence world. I guess I got rejected by the intelligence world, but I'm a part of it because I have the terrorist attacks coming my way. And I have people after me sometimes and my life is scary and dangerous, but you know what? I don't get scared. And we need a president who doesn't get scared. And you don't see Donald Trump scared, but I promise that guy gets so freaking scared that people don't know how to have him in charge. And that's why I thought that at one point Donald Trump had someone use the 25th Amendment on him because he snapped because he got a little afraid by um, him not knowing who's on his side and who's not because Donald Trump decided to wade his way into an intelligence world that was a lot more powerful than him. And he should not have decided that he was going to mess with the United States government by getting involved with our intelligence community when he had that background. And that's the reality about Donald Trump. Is Donald Trump um, had some emotional problems at one point. And uh, I know everyone thinks Donald Trump's a rock because he puts on a face. He's a freaking actor. But I'm a rock. You can't break me. You don't understand the things I go through. And I get up. And I would get up a lot easier if I had freaking secret service people protecting my body because I've had to protect my own body. And you know what? I still get up and I'm still strong. And you should want a strong president like me. You shouldn't want someone who's old and who is going to resist change. You need someone like me who's going to make the future possible because we're running out of time. So please join my, join my campaign. Help me out. We can change the future. All right, I want to thank you both for a very robust hour and a half, a fantastic debate. Really appreciate it. President Trump, former Vice President Joe Biden, thank you to Belmont University for hosting us tonight. And most importantly, 
Thank you to those watching tonight. Election Day is November 3rd. Don't forget to vote. Thank you, everyone, and have a great night. Thank you.